Let me ask you a favor. Vocês estão no fundo aí, aqui. We are home, but if you if you can, like sit here, like in the first, the second, the third row, so it can be more close. We're gonna talk here a little bit about important things. Yeah, that's today my first day preaching in English. So you guys need to help me, okay? I got this. I got I got this. Was already preaching like uh, on uh, 9 a.m. So Holy Spirit showed up. Was good. Was really good. So, oh, Johan, could you please? So, would you mind to pray for me? So he was like, oh, you got this. Yeah, pray for the the message the Holy Spirit wants to give, like to share. Um, dear Lord, I just want to pray over Arthur. I pray that whatever you put in his heart, that he's able to convey the message um, and that we're able to just learn from this. I pray that you give him spiritual confidence, Lord, that he's able to just be courageous in everything he does, Lord. And I pray that us as adolescents, that we're able to just get that message and apply it to our lives and just our hearts and that we're able to grow spiritually for you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. So... I'm going to start asking you a favor. Give me five minutes to get your attention. Five minutes and the Holy Spirit will show up. He's already here. And we're going to talk about important things. Things of what you're praying. Things you're hoping. Things you want to hear. So um, we're like in the middle of the series. Like a series of message. It's called like Holy Habits. Matt was here like. Two weeks ago, and he was starting to preach about holy habits. And you know, habits is really important in your life. Special in a Christian life. In a Christian adventure, like, we have, like, habits. Things we do. Things we, sometimes people are like, oh. Like, oh, you have to do this. You have to do that. But habits, they are really important to us. Sometimes it can be a routine. But habits, they're not like, uh, they, they not like fulfill the purpose by itself. Hab habits, they point out, they point like spiritual habits, like holy habits, point us out to the, to the, um, when we encounter of God. So, uh, when you're reading the Bible, and you have like habits, right? Reading the Bible, prayer, fast, like some habits, holy habits. But the, uh, Reading the Bible cannot be just a reading. You know, otherwise it's going to be boring. Otherwise it's going to be just reading. And reading you can read like a novel or something or, or like a, a book. But reading the Bible must be an encounter with God. Prayer cannot just be like or something when you do when you like screwed, you know. When in a situation it was like, oh, I always do this, this, this prayer. Holy Spirit, you are the helper. The word of God said you are the helper, so help me now. Who finds yourself in this situation? Like, oh, I need to pray now. But you cannot just pray here because you have to pray. That's not the purpose. You have to pray to have an encounter with God. You have to fast, not to be to seem like, oh, I'm more spiritual. Or uh, to show off to, to someone. Or just show off to yourself. But you have to fast to have an encounter with God. But when Matt invited me to preach this message, I was like, oh, I have an habit who changed my life. A holy habit who changed my life. And it's called discipleship. And discipleship has transformed my life. I'm going to share a little bit my experience with discipleship. But when you say discipleship, something weird comes to mind, like, right? It's not like something you use like in a school. You don't say like uh, every week in your school like disciple, discipleship. It looks like something you use only at church, right? And if you ask like your parents, people like, uh, or, or like, or, or if you grow up at church, discipleship is something, it's a word that you use for to connect with like a leadership thing or a maturity thing. But something like if you want to be 
a leader here, church, you have to follow the discipleship path. Or you want to be a small group, or you want to sing, or you want to serve people here. You have to do it something like disciple, discipleship. But you know, that's, that's not like, that's, that's true, but it's just part of it. Discipleship is not a calling from God to someone who want to be like a small leader here in your life. Or someone who want to sing here in our worship team. Discipleship, at some, it's a calling from God for your life. And you know why? And why this message is so important? Because if you don't pay attention, if you don't, uh, if you don't make this, if you do not be a disciple or make disciples, you're going to miss it. And you won't be happy. I'm sorry, that's the word of God, that's not me. If you miss a like discipleship of your life, this holy habit, you won't be, you won't achieve your dreams. Or maybe you can achieve your dreams, but when you get there, it says like, oh, that was it. That was my dream. It's going to be empty. So that's why this is really important. This holy habit, it's really important. And you know, when you talk about discipleship, it's not something that we are in staff meeting here, like I work at church. So me, Pastor, like Matt, Pastor Manuel, Jade, it was like, oh, let's invade, let's create something, it's called discipleship. No, it's something that Jesus did. So when you talk about discipleship, we have to go back to Jesus to see what is the purpose of the discipleship, of this holy habit. And I want to share with you a, a, a text, which is like in the Bible, and it is the final words, the last words of Jesus. Have you heard stories or in a movie, the last words of someone? That's really important. Like in a movie, like the last words, you know, like someone is dying, someone is like, oh, I'm going to die. Yeah, but I have a wish. So that's really important. We put this in Hollywood, we put this on on screen, it's really important, the last words. And it's like a heart-to-heart -heart moment. But Jesus, the Bible, that uh, reveal us the last words of Jesus. You know, Jesus came here on earth as a child. He had diapers, you know. He had to have the diapers changed. Yeah. He grew up. He fulfilled his mission. He died on the cross. He was rising or risen. I don't know how to say in English. But after all, he spent like 40 days with us. And what, we're not here like what Jesus has to say like after the whole thing, right? But the last words before he comes to heaven and he says like, yeah, I'm, I will come back. But this is my last words here. It's really important and it's in the Bible. I'm going to read it with you. So open your Bible into Matthew 28. The verse 18 to 20. And the last word of Jesus, it's about discipleship. And you know, guess, guess what? How many times the word disciple or discipleship uh, appears in the New Testament? How many times? Guess what? Any guesses? How many times the word disciples or discipleship we can, we can read like in the New Testament, more than 250 times. So uh, if you read the Bible, the New Testament, you're going to see disciples or discipleship like more than 250 times. But you know like a very common word of nowadays, it's Christian. Like we're Christian, we're Christian. Guess how many times appeared in the New Testament, this word. Less than 10 times. Less than 10 times. So, I don't know about you, but it looks like Jesus wants us to be more disciple than just Christians. More disciples than just show up at church. More disciple, his disciple them like check like some boxes like, oh, you do holy habits. And we're going to share this, reading the last words of Jesus. Then Jesus came to them, he said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go 
and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I command to you. And surely I, I am with you always to the very end of the age. Oh, so Hollywood, right? It's so last words. I surely, I am with you always to the very end of the age. That's so Hollywood. That's so like last words, right? After that he came to church, he came to heaven. But the point is, discipleship is not like a calling if you want to be a leader at a church. And you want to like break it up, the, break down this text. Just to talk a little bit about, about like some sentence here. First of all, the authority that Jesus gave us, it is ongoing and make disciples. You know, the first part of the text said that. Then Jesus came today to, to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples. You know what this means? It does mean you, just, you don't make yourself on your own strength. You don't, you don't make disciples on your own strength. You make disciples because of the authority of Jesus. You know what does mean in your everyday life? I don't know if you're struggling with something. Maybe porn. Maybe pride. Maybe injustice. I don't know if you, if you like suffering like injustice. But the authority to make disciples and to be disciples, it is in Jesus, not on you. So Jesus says, oh, I, the, the, the Bible says, Jesus came close. So get close to Jesus and you can, make the, you can make disciples. You can be a Jesus disciple also. I love a theologian. He's called A.W. Tozer. And he says this. Only a disciple can make a disciple. Well, so simple, but so true, so real. Only a disciple can make a disciple. Here we already talk about the discipleship. It's a holy habit. It's an encounter with God. It's something that is not a suggestion to your life. If you want to be happy, if you want to be living your purpose, if you want to live the dream, it's not a suggestion. If you want to achieve those things, if you want to leave your purpose here on earth, if you want to make difference here on earth, on your school, over your life, if you want to be happy, you have to pay attention to this. And the, the thing is, only a disciple can make a disciple. So in order to go and make a disciple on your school, you have to be first a disciple of Jesus. Not Christian. Not just show up, serve. I pray, you ask me to pray, I won't pray. We have to be a disciple. And, um, and the, the point two, that on a, the second here, make disciples of all nations. You know, the, 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 the second part of the text say, says that, like, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. You know, like, this part of the verse says about nations. And I love, I don't know about you, but I love traveling. I love traveling. I, 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 I'm, I'm living the dream. I've been, like, in, in 39 countries. Uh, um, on Memorial Day, I'm going to finish, like, all states here in the U.S., I, I, I'm, I love nations. I love, like, uh, living abroad. But you were already born here in the U.S. Or maybe you were here, like, you were born in Brazil, but your parents move out to here, like, when you're young. Have you asked, like, God, not your parents. If you ask your parents, maybe they're going to say, like, oh, you know, life in Brazil is hard. You just move off, new opportunities. No. Uh, the American dream. But have you asked God why you're here? Why you're not in Brazil? 
why you're not, you didn't was born in China? And guess what? God wants you to make disciples where you are. God wants you to make disciples in Framingham or, or like Marlborough and Milford. God wants you to make disciples, be a disciple here, now, today. And that's really important. That can change your life. Ask God about that. But here in the text, he says about nations. And that's true. We're talking about countries here in the Bible. But you know, like, how many nations we can find here in Framingham, in Milford High School. And I'm not talking about, like, Ukrainian, Indian, Mexican. I'm talking about people different than you. Like, people who has, like, a blue hair, you know, different style than you. But the calling of Jesus is to make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. So Jesus didn't call you to go and say, like, oh, you have to change your heart. You have to change your, your, your hair. You have to change your, your style. I didn't like your shoes. It's not disciples of you. It's his disciples. It's to make disciples not of you, of your taste, of your Spotify playlist. It's disciples of Jesus in all nations. And, and that's hard. That's hard. That's challenging. Like make disciples, like people different than you. People who don't laugh about your joke. Or people who doesn't speak your language. Like me, I'm trying to speak English. You know? But that's a calling from God. And if you miss at this point, you know, school is going to be boring. Like the places you must show up is going to be boring. If it's boring, it's because you're losing something. You think you're, gonna, you're going to school to learn math, to pass on a test, to talk with some friends. And that's true. You have to go, you have to learn math, you have to do tests. You have to like make friends at school. But the purpose, the why you're here on earth, the why you're here in the USA, the why you have to go to school is because you have to make disciples right there. Disciples of Jesus. You know, and that's, that's completely changed my life. I'm here, and Matt invites me, and Matt says like, oh, Arthur, I'll be preaching like um, pastor in Brazil. I'll be preaching in a um, man auditorium. Would you mind to preach at this park? And Sunday I was like, no way you're going to do that to me. It's no way. In English, mm -mm. And he was like, please. And I was like, mm -mm. no, mm -mm. And he said, you can do it. And I was like, if you say you can do it, and I believe you're a voice of God over my life, you know what? I can do it. I can do it. And I'm here. And I'm here. And there, you can be the voice of God to your friend. You can be the voice of God to someone else's life. Especially at school. So don't miss it, this. Don't miss it. And the third point that I would like to bring it up is make disciples, not discipleship. And the verse says, and teaching them to obey everything I command you. And surely I am always with you to the very end of age. But if teach them to obey everything I've command you. You know, Jesus, did, the, the final words of Jesus he didn't say to you like, oh, I want you to be a doctor. I, I, I don't want to, Jesus, Jesus didn't say to you like, oh, go and be a teacher. Go and be a soccer player, a very good one. He didn't say like, go and be a psychiatrist. He said, go and make disciples. The less important thing is it's not like about what you're going to do in life. And you can do everything that God puts in your heart. You're going to be a, a, a teacher, 
make disciples in a classroom. If, you, if God calls you to be a soccer player, make disciples at the field. You know, but that's the really important thing. It doesn't matter what you choose, what God puts you in your heart. Make disciples right there because that's the goal. That's why you're here. You're not here like, you're not, you're not going to be like a soccer player just to make, like, to score. You're not going to be like a teacher just to share like, oh, teach math. So make disciples. Disciples who love math. Math. I was about to say math. <laughs> you know, make disciples where you are. If you're here at church, make disciples here. Make disciples here. And that's a very important thing, this third point. It says like, don't make discipleship. Make disciples. And you know, Jesus didn't say, oh, make sure he's going to obey everything I command you. No, give them at least like the holy habit so they can follow. But at least to them like prayer. Show up at church. Serve. Give money to church. No. Jesus says, teach them how to obey. And that's a heart to heart. Teach them to obey is not like something you do it. It's something you understand. It's something you are. Because only a disciple can make another disciple. So didn't didn't say to you, go and preach, go and do it. He said, go and make disciples. Go and make disciples. And I'm, I'm also, I work here at church. But I'm also work for a network of churches. They have like seven, uh, almost 700 churches around the world. New Life is one of these church. And I work with pastors. And one thing I serve, I serve pastors here in the U.S. I have like almost 50 churches here. And I serve them with resources, but also conversations. And one thing I, 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 always, uh, I love talking with pastors is like, we have to go back to discipleship. Because when you say discipleship, discipleship is not something in, in church, we as church, we taught that a lot. Like discipleship is something you add up. It's something you add to your life. Like discipleship, it's about make a course. Like Bible Academy. And you show up in Bible Academy. Nah, don't get me wrong. But discipleship it's something you add, like add a prayer, right? Add a worship time with God. Add like a Bible chapter. We thought like as church, like discipleship is something you add on. But that's also like, that's, that's true. But it's part of the truth. But discipleship is something you leave also. And if you go back to Jesus, you're going to see that a lot. Jesus said, like, if you want to follow me, deny yourself, take your cross and follow me. And guess what? Let me tell you, like, from the bottom of my heart. If you don't want to follow Jesus for any reason, he won't be mad at you. He's not Zeus. You know Zeus? I don't know how to say Zeus. Yeah. Zeus. Uh, he's not Zeus, like Zeus. Zeus, he's not Zeus. He's not like, there's a Greek mythology, but sometimes they put like Zeus in the place of God. When you say to God, we're thinking we talk to Zeus, Zeus. You know, like if, if you like, he have a path, if you leave a little bit, he's going to like a thunder, boom. A, a crash, boom. You know, that's not Jesus. That's not Jesus. So if you don't want to follow Jesus tonight, th this morning, he won't be mad at you. But you're going to miss it, your purpose. You're going to miss it, the happiness, the fullness of the life. You're going to miss it. You're going to miss it. You're going to miss it. And you can miss it at church. You can miss it like on Sundays, like the like just show up and, oh, it's okay. It's a guy speaking there like he's... He barely speaks English, so I don't care. Like, you can miss it. 
you can miss it. You can miss it. But discipleship, it's about living things. And you know, we're talking about nations. And one day, I, I, I backpacked in Europe for two years. I was living the dream. Europe, I was young, you know. Every day, night, like in a country, like my mother called me out, where you are? We didn't have like find my in the uh, iPhone. So my, wife, my, my mother was like, where are you? And I was like, mom, I am in Czechoslovakia. There is no vows. I cannot say like, I cannot like ask water. I was living the dream. And one day I was like in Budapest. Have you been in Budapest? Budapest is sick. Budapest, Bud, go to Budapest. It's nice. And I was like in a bridge. I was thinking there. And I was in, in a point of my life that I said, I was like in a real conversation with God. And I was like, God, I already gave you my, my youth. I gave, already gave you my heart. I already gave you my dreams. I already gave you my worship, my money. I already gave you it all. But you want it all. And when you mean all, it's all. So now I just have this injustice who happened to me. And I was so offended. I was like, it was hard. I was struggling with something that happened to me. It was like, it was a lie. It was, I, was, I was really struggling. Uh, struggle, uh, uh, struggle. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. And I was like, in, I, I, I said, God, God, if you want it all, I already gave you, what, I already gave like everything was good. But now I offer you my injustice. And that's this discipleship. That's this like walk with God. You leave things behind. When you know, I was backpacking, you know, I was like in amazing places. And I can't take like a stone or like a uh, ima geladeira, you know. Because if I had to, if I want to bring like a stone, like for like, I don't know. I had to leave it up like a, a shirt or a pants or my passport. Because I want to have the backpack. And walk with God is the same thing. Walk with God is like, is you, you must leave things on the way. That's discipleship. You know what to leave? You leave your struggles. You leave the old, the old way to think. You leave like the bad habits. You leave your sin. You leave like your feeling that you're not loved. Jesus is asking you that also. You leave like all your your shyness, you know. So I don't know how to say that, like shyness, you know. And Jesus, you're gonna leave things on the way, and that's a discipleship. It's not something you add on. It's not just a holy habit that you check. But it's something you leave on the cross. But everything you give on the cross. Jesus give you something also. He gave you his when you live like injustice, he gives you like forgiveness. He gives you like peace, joy, you know. But sometimes we have so much in our backpack. Sometimes we we like have so much on we carry so much things. But this calling to make disciples and it's first to be a disciple. And I want to invite you to bow your hand, your head, close your eyes. The last part of the text says that, And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. I don't know if you're feeling Jesus, if you can feel the presence of Jesus. But he said he's going to be with you on the mission. But sometimes you don't feel it. Why? You know why? Because you're missing the mission. 
You not show up for the mission to be who you are, to be who he's called you to be. And you're struggling. And you says like, oh, I can't I can feel that much. Uh, reading the Bible, it's, it, 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 it sucks. Prayer is like boring. Because you're missing the encounter, the purpose. But Jesus said, if you want to show up on a mission, surely he'll be with you always. To the very end of the age. So if this person is you, everyone here eh, are, are, are with their clo eyes closed. Just you and the Holy Spirit. But if you want to say, Jesus, I don't want to miss the mission. I want to be your disciples. To make more disciples. I already be a church, uh, maybe. I already serve. But now I realize that I, I need to go deeper. I can't be just a Christian. But I have to be your disciples. I have to make disciples to be happy in life. To, per, to fulfill my purpose. If this person on you, I would like you to uh, raise your hand. Everyone here is. God bless you. If this person is, it's you, just raise your hand. Because I want to pray for you. I don't want to expose you. God bless you. God bless you. Jesus saw you. Jesus saw you. Holy Spirit, thank you so much because you make us able to follow Jesus. Thank you because our purpose to make disciples is for us to be your disciple, Jesus. Thank you because this is like a privilege. You called us broken people. People who struggle with everything. Thank you so much because you loved us first. Help me, help my friends here to follow you. To make disciples. To fulfill our purpose here on earth. And thank you so much. Because we, uh, you are with us always to the very end of age. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Please.